Now when you're drawing a pet portrait, the nose has got to be perfect, otherwise the rest of it is all for nothing. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it in this video. So let's go in with what I think will be roughly the general colour. Let's check it first. So let's get a little scrap of paper. So that's roughly right, as you can see. It needs to go darker at the top, it needs to get more grey there. But if I squint my eyes, I can see that's not far out. Especially, I think, if I put a bit of this on top. And then maybe a little bit of the pop. You see, to kind of get that colour. So those are the three I'm going to try out with the nose. So Carbothero 642. Do went 240 and then the pit 132. So a combination. Now if I use my pencil on the side, you know what that means? I'm going to be able to get more layers. More layers means I can do more adjustments if I need to, which I probably will. Highlight will go on top. General colour down here. Need to get some pastel on there. Anyway, because, you know, we're doing a pastel drawing. So that's a general colour. Down here is going to be actually darker, but let's get a little bit of the purple on there. I know I need it more up here. Just sink in general colour, very lightly. I know the shadows and the highlights is what's gonna, you know, really make it look three dimensional. Over here as well. So here it needs to go dark. Let's go in. I'm not going in with something as rich as what I'm seeing. Looks artificial to me. So I'm going with that Carbothello 640. So I'm still keeping colour in there. But tonal value, most important. And down here it goes darker. And it comes up. Reminds me of a stingray a bit. Up here. Like that. And then up here is dark, so dark you can almost not see the difference between that and the actual nasal hole. That goes like that. And this kind of sweeps out to the edge. Now if I want to, I want to, do want to kind of enrich that colour, I can put some of this red on top, see?
Right, so gray, gray it down. Let's see what happens there. So I wanted to go even darker than that. So let's look at my greys. Let's see what I've got. Yeah, it actually comes out lighter. Then that's really dark. See, some colours are very punchy, actually. I'm going to put the pencil down on the surface. So let's do this, because I need to knock that colour back. This needs to be darker. So I'll do this, and then I'll put some of that pinky colour on top. up there, comes around here. doesn't need to be exactly right the shape I do want right but the colors don't need to be identical for the whole list to work
a little bit of that grey up around here kind of fades out here and goes into the pink comes around a bit more highlights should really make it look more three-dimensional so you've got to kind of stick with the process back in before I lose that black now the night see I've got to go even deeper with that ready color as well Let's try a bit of highlight on here and see see what happens. That's probably light, almost light enough there.
quite a light on this top section as you can see um, a bit lighter there there blend all our texture away. I'll look better when the um, fur is on the darker than that to require it up here. dragging some of that out so I can see how these areas join together a bit more at the top a little bit better
quite a light flashy color here. I'm letting some of the grey show through. Let's sit back a bit, take a look. Get a different angle on it, different perspective. Right. Try a bit of highlight here, see what happens. Bit of highlight here as well. Texture. It's a big, big crop, so pretty big draw in. So we need to get. Details in. If I need to, I can soften all this. My finger. With the amount of rain we've had lately, I probably shouldn't be spending my time doing this. I probably should be getting some wood together ready to build an arc. I'm up in the loft conversion doing this so that would be okay I could just open the window and launch my boat out okay lighter there should have been some highlight on there as well. So that's about the middle.
chair. Right, and then it comes, so it's, you don't see much out here, just a few little touching on the edges a little bit. And it's mainly the and push a bit harder there. Right. Might be a bit lighter up here as well. A couple of bright areas. No doubt I'll come back to this. I'll just detail it a bit more later on. might get a bit smudged and probably you're wondering well if you're right-handed why did you even do the nose why didn't you wait with a glassine paper I can protect the area anyway so it doesn't really matter all that much and then I just draw what I fancy sometimes I feel that I want to do an area that will, you know, inspire me to uh, keep going. Other times I may like to do a big background, you know, uh, the underlayer and keep going with that. Right, so down here should be more of that ready colour, I think. Reflected light, uh, reflected light here. Okay, so not the same colour, it always shows up a little bit different on screen anyway. But don't keep, don't beat yourself up if you haven't got it identical. If you want to spend hours and hours and hours on each little tiny bit, because you really want to get it identical, as close as possible, that's fine. But uh, I'm more after the essence, what I call of the animal. Rather than duplicate of a photograph. So it might look very different, okay, but then Nobody else is going to see that, so let's pop that out the way. And then get the glassine out the way. And you can see the nose on its own then, looks pretty good, pretty realistic. 
Now, if you'd love to take your pet portraits to the next level, or you're really interested in drawing animals, I've got just the videos for you, literally hundreds and hundreds of videos and subjects on my Patreon art channel, and I've got over 1,600 members learning from me each month. Love to see you there too.